This ferry is heading to Bruni Island. Next stop after here is Antarctica, and I'm about to visit a house designed literally at the end of the world. Explain to me how to get all the materials and yet think it through. We did. Everything had to come on this ferry. The climb is extreme, high winds, very strong rain. It's pretty exciting, actually. It's such a great opportunity. Pete, on the way to the house, you've got to stock up. This right. is the Bruni Island Bakery. <laughs> so it's an honesty system. Right. So you just help yourself to wow. freshly made bread. Look at this. All stocked up, ready to go. All right, Pete, we're here. Bruni Island Farmhouse, South Bruni. Complete with extras. Well, you know you've created something special when your back is turned to Taylor's Bay <laughs> and you're looking at your handiwork. Yeah, and I think that's an important aspect to consider, actually, is thinking about the building from all different views and actually enjoying the building, stepping away from it and looking back at it. Tell me about the exterior. It's simple, it's uniform, it's one colour. And pretty much one material. Very traditional corrugated steel, which is the Lysart Custom Orb in colour bond colour terrain. And it actually changes with the light, changes with the seasons. I always say it's a bit like Uluru. Nice. But in the southern end of Australia. Yeah, it's like a burnt sienna rust wrapped up in Uluru. Now, it doesn't get more Aussie than that. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Are you kidding me? This looks like I'm walking through a, a landscape painting, an Arthur Street and landscape. I know, it's pretty beautiful. And it's almost the building comes down and you're standing in the lens of a camera. So it was all about this view and getting that view right. Tell us about some of this lining. This is the wool from these beautiful sheep here. So we've used that as an insulation and we call this our wool fresco. So right. rather than doing a fancy chandelier, it's a yeah. farmhouse, we have okay. a fresco. Be honest, how many red wines did it take to come up with that idea? A few woolen jumpers there, mate. Uh, no, carpet wool. Tell me, Arthur, you seem to know a lot about sheep. What do you know about design and architecture? Pam's and my view about design and architecture is you find an architect whose work that you like, you give them a broad specification as to what you want, but not overly prescriptive, yeah. and then you let them go. They get out of their way. Get out of the way. Yeah. Like a good shearer. Yeah. So from the kitchen, the dining, into the living area, it's a quaint little timber jewel box. It is. So there's no corridors, and that way there's no wasted space. Every piece of this floor plan is used. So off the living room is the main bedroom. I'm really just expanding that floor plate so when there's just the two of them, they can live in this entire space. Well, I reckon this is one bedroom and you'd never have trouble falling asleep, counting all their neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, but also hard to get out of bed because of that view into the ensuite and it's lined with this beautiful raw terracotta. Yep, so this is the inside of the terracotta chimney that you see on the outside. So we're inside the chimney now. So very raw, low maintenance materials, plywood, concrete, Australian made basins, and then these fantastic raw brass taps, which are also Australian made from Sussex. Right, so this was referencing the old outside chimney on the old sheds, but you've turned it into a bar, turning fire into water. Yes, but also referencing the notion of a bath in the paddock. But in this instance, it's too cold and rainy out there, so we brought it in and enclosed it. And you also have a great conversation with our lovely sheep. Hello, sheep. And they're as curious about you as, as we are about them. Upstairs, a mezzanine and a work area for Arthur and Pam, and it leads to a second guest bedroom. And here, we're embraced by the intimacy of the roof timbers. As they say, there's no such thing as a new idea, just contemporary ways of interpreting them. So Fiona, how do you design a beautiful farmhouse? Where do you start? Well, I think you, you definitely start with where the views are, what do we want to be sheltered from? And then we ended up really with a simple box with a bit on the side which could have a, what we call a windbreak in the middle. So you could sit either side of this windbreak to protect you from the north or the southerlies, depending on what was affecting you. Well, Pam Arthur, you've ended up with a box. Pretty beautiful box. <laughs> We've ended up with a, a very nice house <laughs> <laughs> that's shaped a bit like a box with refinements, but um, it works and uh, we're pretty happy with it. This house based on the principles of durability, sustainability, 
portability. Recently voted best rural abode on the planet. Not bad for this house at the end of the world, now on top of the world.